Environmental factors do affect the success of snail farm. You do not want to put $10,000, $20,000 into a business and fail. Hi, welcome to my YouTube channel. This is your favorite snail farmer. You're here today and it's good to have you. Um, today we're going to talk about um, quite a controversial topic. It has to do with... Um, some environmental factors that uh, are likely to affect your snow farm and it's a video that everybody who is interested in snow farming or anybody who is currently doing snow farming should be interested in watching because it's a very important thing to discuss and indulge me with your thoughts before i go into it subscribe to my youtube channel so that you're always going to see uh, and get notifications from this channel as soon as I post, you'll be able to react and then leave your comments so that I can react to them. So this, this is a topic that, again, a lot of people haven't considered. Um, but yes, a lot of environmental factors do affect your snow farm. No matter, no, no matter which, which uh, housing you're, you're trying to use, uh, you might be affected by these conditions. Unless... You are trying to use the standardized greenhouse um, that you see in Europe and in the Western world. And now even in Africa, so many people have the standardized greenhouse where you are able to control temperature, humidity, predators, pests, and all sort of things. You see that white material that they used to build? Yeah, that's what I mean. Unless you're doing that and putting in place all the things I've mentioned. And then inside that greenhouse, it's where uh, you're going to build your pens. Listen to me carefully. I'm not talking about net houses. Somebody can go and crop my part of my video and, and use it for their own uh, skirmishes. So listen to me carefully. Environmental factors will affect your farm unless you you are trying to farm them in something I would call like like in, in a place where the, the outside temperature and humidity has no access to the snails, which would be the standardized greenhouse, not net houses that you see online. I'm talking about the greenhouses that you see tomato, cabbage, and uh, pepper farmers do online that housing inside of it that you are going to be farming the snails in pens now that greenhouse should be able to control temperatures and be able to control atmospheric humidity it means you need more sophisticated technology to be able to produce humidity in that greenhouse and that is what some farms around the world do. Now, if you do not have all those things and that investment, this is what you should consider. And this is the truth. Now, this is why I wanted you uh, to indulge me with your brains. Now, think about this. God created all things. For those who believe in science, science created all things. It's up to you. It's not my business. That's just by the way. But anyway, God created all things. And if you take a closer look, I don't want to talk too much. If you take a closer look, you would realize that God puts certain things in certain locations for a reason. And these things are able to adapt to those locations. And that is why you, you're going to find a certain animal in a certain location and a certain animal not in a certain location. Does it make sense? There's a reason why around November, December, January, February, you're not going to find mosquitoes in New York, USA, America. Because the environment conditions affect them. So they become dormant. They're not able to operate as they would be able to operate. Whereas these mosquitoes, if you put them in a glass jar and you transfer them to Ghana today, 
So we say hallelujah. Because the environment is conducive for them. And so that is why in certain locations you wouldn't find certain animals and even certain plants. There's a plant in Ghana that some Ghanaians call it Taimiau. And then some people try to farm it in the U.S. But when they try it and winter comes, the, the plant dies because it's not able to survive in this terrain. And you see, God is so smart. Our nature is so beautiful. It's, it's so smart that, look, when God put certain animals in certain locations, he also added their predators. To what? Manage their population. Because, look, if we human beings, if we didn't have other animals that could kill us, like a bear, like a lion, like mosquitoes, like snakes, if God had not created all those things that could reduce our population, we human beings would have also overpopulated and destroyed our wealth. This is why I said I needed your brain. You know, go follow me, follow me in this story. You see, somebody should shout, preach. <laughs> anyway, so God in his wisdom created snails, different type of snails and put different type of snails in different locations so some of these snails what controls their population is the weather when it's snowing they go dormant some of them die and then the the the, the population is managed but when it comes to certain type of snails predators are the ones that are able to manage them so you would have birds you would have snakes you would have alligators you would have all sort of animals even house flies um, doing the damage for you and in some snails or some animals it's both predators and the weather okay enough of the of the thoughts now let's simmer down to west africa i know i got i get a lot of calls around the world we've gotten calls from some of the places i never thought existed but please let's talk about west africa today so when we come down to west africa and we even come set, we even come down some more to say ghana where i come from today we're, we're in february right if you go to ghana and you want to buy a thousand snails from a natural habitat so like you want to buy a thousand snails coming directly from the forest the people of ghana would list some locations for you now the reasons why they will list those locations for you is, is that yes when you go there you will get the snails the reason why out of all the places in Ghana, they would show you this particular places is because of the environmental conditions. And they play a big role. So do not think that when you set up your snail farm in a penthouse and in what they call a, a, a net house and that some people have bought so crazy into it. Do not think that you are outside the, uh, the, the, the external factors. You're not. The moment you set up a a 10 by 15 feet or a 10 by 20 feet 25 feet uh, net housing or what you call greenhousing some of you 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 are not excluding yourself from that hot blazing sun that is that is, that is producing about 36 degrees celsius of heat please you are not exempted that heat is going directly into your farm if if you think you have planted things in that space and so it's going to help reduce the temperature it's it's not going to be anything significant if you do a penthouse and you set up your farm in locations where the average temperature is quite too hot for your snails they will struggle because they are outside the temperatures where they feel comfortable in the same temperatures that determine where you would find snails today in ghana you're outside of those limits so what are you expecting your snails will die now let's go to humidity but let me give you the temp the temperature range for snails the snails that we're talking about they are going to feel comfortable between 20 degrees celsius to maximum 30 degrees celsius Anything lesser or higher than that, might, they might have an issue. They will go into estivation. If they come out of, out of estivation and it's too harsh for them, they will die. Now let's talk about atmospheric humidity. If you have watched a couple of my videos, especially the last video, 
you realize that I did mention that snails require some moisture to maneuver and walk around. So if if the atmosphere is dry, snails have a dry skin, and so that is why they go into estivation to prevent uh, cuts on their skin while they maneuver during the dry season. Now, if you set up your farm in places where you record dry season where the soil becomes dry every single thing becomes dry their skin becomes dry trust me whether you have a net house or a pen housing system the snails will will go through that dry season even if even if you irrigate so some people would say well i turn on the showers and i irrigate my farm it does not solve the atmospheric humidity you have to set up your farm in locations where naturally you do not struggle and i see a lot of people trying to set up farms in in the rich people area because they do not want to go to the hinterlands my brother my sister why do you want to do rice farming in accra in east Legon? it won't survive it might not survive when you want to do rice farming, you go to the locations where it's conducive for rice farming. If you want to do snail farming and you're serious about your investments, do a lot of research with atmospheric humidity, which should be between 75% to 95%, averagely, year, all year round. And the temperatures, I've already mentioned them because environmental factors do affect the success of snail farms and in the past three years four years i've seen people set up gre uh, greenhouses or i don't want to use the word greenhouse net houses in accra and that is why your farms are collapsing you're setting up your farms in accra you're setting up your farms in places where it's hot it's dry my brother you you're you're losing your investment and this is why you should have called us for for education for the knowledge before you go into this venture you know there are people that i want my brother don't do this and they stop talking to me they stop talking to katie samo because katie samo is blunt with the truth i'm trying to save you your investment and for such people that i advise and and they cut me off because they don't like that i'm telling them the truth when they come back to me i charge them four times the, the usual price that's a joke. I, I don't even charge that much. But anyway, this is my advice. Make sure you do the right thing. Do your research. Reach out to people. Get the education. Get the knowledge. You do not want to put $10,000, $20,000 into a business and fail. And that's when now you, you want to get somebody to help you. And then you say snow farming is not a good business. No, it's a good business. You, you just are not ready to learn and listen to advice and, and consultancy. You don't. And some people do not even see the need to seek advice or get a consultant. <laughs> I've never seen a successful farm that doesn't have a consultant. I hope you learned something today. Uh, I appreciate your time. Do subscribe to this YouTube channel because we'll be, we'll be dropping more gold nuggets. And so I hope you enjoy your day. Thank you. This is Katie Samuel. I love you guys. Bye.